Howdy everyone, back with another video of getting some more baby pigs. Last time we got pigs, we got around 400 and 500. I can't remember the exact number, but this time we're gonna get around 800 or so, which should be able to fill the rest of this south side of the south barn. I'm by myself today. My dad usually typically comes the first kind of day of filling, maybe the second day of filling, and then he's kind of over it. Well, he's not over it, but he's just a busy guy. He's got stuff he's got going on, and it's my job to get the pigs in here anyway. So I'm a one man show today and I probably will be a one man show for the rest of the kind of the fill. So far so good with these pigs. They've been in here about three days. And honestly, I can tell you there's not a whole lot of fallbacks. I've been walking through here. Um, I haven't pulled pigs yet, but I am gonna be doing it probably tomorrow. Before the new group of pigs comes here today, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mat feed these guys, chore them, get them all fed. And then I'll probably go ahead and keep feeding the rest of the pens that are empty right now, just so I can get that out of the way and I'll just feed up until the truck gets here. We're gonna have to resume mat feeding after I get these pigs in because I just heard the truck pull up. So the truck's here and we're gonna have to unload these pigs. Perfectly lined up. Yeah. Not perfectly lined up, nothing more that you can ask for. That's it? That is it. All righty. Well, I'll probably see you Monday. All righty. All righty. Have a good day. So I got all the pigs in. I spread them out. I put some on this side of the south side and I finished putting the rest on this side. Uh, I just figured that there was definitely going to be too many pigs. If I tried fitting all the pigs on this side, there's no way I'd have to move some over here. So I just said, screw it, I'll put some on this side too. They also broke into the feed, uh, sack, pen. I thought I could just use a panel to close it off, but they broke in. So I'm gonna have to get them out of there, but I'm gonna go ahead and count out 66 to a pen, fill them up, and hopefully we can get this whole side completely full. do is I'm gonna go over to this set of pens over here and I'm just gonna count these out and then I'll come back to these and see what I need over there and if I have the right amount of pigs over there then I'll run these pigs over into the north the north side of this room. We got this side all sorted out we got two sets of 66 in there one set of 66 in here and we have 84 pigs in here so we're gonna take um, 18 pigs out of here and put it on the north side. Before we take pigs and put it on the north side we gotta get this feed run. We gotta get this feed line running. And my dad is currently working on wiring up this box. That way that the feed line can run. Cause the box that we had previous, it wasn't very good. And we like these better than the old box that we had. So he's gonna go ahead. He's gonna do his wiring skills. Trial and error, baby. baby. Trial and error. Oh yeah, our, my dad joined us. He got done with what he was doing. So I've been entertaining family today. It's been entertaining family. But he had to get some pig action in his day. Yep. Would be right without it. How do you know how to do all this stuff? <laughs> I spent I spent about 15 years working for a building company and out of that I spent about I don't know, 10 years as the head service guy. So I did all the repair work and, and fire up and this is the kind of stuff I did every day. So I've done I've done a couple, anyway. So what you're trying to say is you're a hog building genius. 
<laughs> yeah, well, that's up for debate, but I know my way around. I guess I'll say that. He's gonna go turn on the breaker and hope that it works. Fingers crossed. Oh, that's a good sign right there, baby. That is a good sign. We're in business. Uh, so the reason we switched these out. So this is an AP feed line and it comes with their Smart IR and it's, it's only smart in name only. And within the first year, there's four lines in here and within the first year, two of them went bad. And then another one went bad. This one hadn't gone bad, but I wasn't gonna wait. And we're switching them to a more automation box. And what I really like about these is, on the old system, if you had the feeder set to run for so many hours, and the feed build up, I'm gonna make sure this photo eye works, but, so if the feed build up, and it shut the system off, Okay, there it shut it off. When the feed drops down, the system doesn't restart. It has a time delay. And so your motor at the end of the line, it doesn't sit there and start and stop and start and stop. It waits so the line only fills once and it's a lot better on your motor. Our old system, it just had a time clock as far as how often it would run, but then once it shut off, it had no time delay to restart, it would just restart instantly. So this is a lot better for the motor, a lot less wear, and these have been around a long time, a lot more dependable. Now that we got the feed line running and everything like that, we're gonna move these pigs onto the north side and get everybody finally spread out evenly. We got all the pigs out of this pen right here. We got them all sorted out. Everybody sorted. We got some pigs on the north side. We got a little bit more than I thought we would. So these two pens right here are gonna be our fallback pig pens. So here in the next couple days, the first group of pigs that we got, we're gonna go through there and we're gonna pull probably five, five of the smallest pigs out of each pen and we'll run them into these pens. So we usually have four fallback pig pens per room so we have usually eight fallback pig pens in each building each 2400 building so we'll have four in here we'll have four in the other room and that's what we'll you know that's those are the pens we'll give the bottom 10 percent pigs you know some special care some special feed some spot treatments more you know treating um, just give them the treatment that they need to hopefully get them back to being a normal average pig the reason why we really wait to go ahead and pull pigs is because um, in the beginning, you might have a small pig that gets here and he's small to start with, but that small pig might have just not uh, got a mo his mama's tit in front of his face his whole life. You know, he probably got bullied and got pushed out of the way, but that might have made him a fighter and he'll fight to get the feed out of the feeder and he might really excel when he has feed in front of his face all the time, opposed to a fat hog that's really big to start with, but he's lazy because he always had his mama's tit in his face and he doesn't want to work for anything or doesn't want to get up and go get some food. So you never really know who's gonna excel and not excel. So that's kind of why we wait a couple days before we go ahead and pull pigs. Dad and I are out here in our corn 2020. We're gonna give you a little bit of an update on how it's going so far, if I can find him. So we're out here in the same field that we were in when we did the population check in uh, late May. This was planted the 23rd of April. Um, so as you can see, because I'm a little over four foot nothing, this corn, the last few weeks this corn has just gone crazy. Um, when I was a kid, and we, the hybrids back then, the saying always was, if you're lucky your corn would be knee high by the 4th of July. Well, today's hybrids, this corn 
could very well be tasseling by the 4th of July. Uh, probably not. It's not going to make up that much ground, but uh, it's going to be close. And we've had excellent weather. Um, it's good moisture still. We've had a few rains and we got everything side dressed and it doesn't look like we've got much stress on the plants. Um, when we walk through them, we don't see any, I don't see any uh, lesions. Um, not anything really working on the plants. So all we were out here, I just thought I'd look. You can see the the trash left over from last year's bean crop, and mixed in it is corn stalks from the year before, um, and even this a little bit of biocal. This is the calcium product that we spread in the fall, and so not all of it is available the first year. Kind of just like the manure we put on when we put on hog manure, you don't get all of those all the nutrients in that you don't get the first year so there's residual to it um, but even the trash as you can see it's not as heavy as when we planted because the biological activity in the soil it helps break that trash down and by fall there won't be much left I mean you won't know that because then when we go through and harvest there's gonna be a fresh layer of trash um, and then the cycle starts over again so that's pretty much it for this one guys if you guys like the video please give it a big thumbs up it really helps me out pushes my content further for more farmers and people like you to see it if you like what i'm about what this farm is about feel free to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notified every time i post a video i hope you guys have a great rest of your day and i'll see you in the next one peace